Now, that might sound like a sawtooth waveform, and it most definitely looks like one too. But what if I told you that this is just a collection of sine waves? So stick with me, because we're going to have a look at harmonics. Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack, I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. Okay, so here's the thing. For over a year now, I've been making plans to produce a series of videos in where I explain various types of synthesis methods. We're talking additive, subtractive, FM synthesis, car plus strong, wavetable synthesis. There are a wide range of synthesis methods used in synthesizers that we can then use to sculpt sounds with, make some noise. But there's a little caveat to this. You see, I can't even start the series properly without explaining the concept of harmonics. And so that's what I want to do in this video. Right, down to basics. Let's say we play the same note with the same pitch and the same loudness, same volume from two different instruments, a guitar and a piano. They will still sound extremely different from one another. Why is that? Well, it's because of their specific timbre or tone color. Now, there are two things to look at when we're talking about timbre, and it's the envelope of a sound, meaning the amplitude over time. And the second thing is the frequency spectrum and all the frequencies contained within a sound and their specific amplitudes. Now, since this series is going to be about synthesis, we're only going to analyze sounds being produced by synthesizer oscillators. Because just like different instruments, the various different waveforms in a synthesizer oscillator also have their own specific timbres, where each waveform is basically a timbre preset. And we're going to have a look at that. We're going to need a little lab for this, and our lab is going to consist of an oscilloscope, so we can see the waveform shapes of the sounds coming out of our oscillator, and we also need some way of reading the frequencies inside the sound, so we're gonna need a frequency spectrum analyzer. So now that we have our little lab set up, I want to introduce you to the sine wave. And since we have an oscilloscope set up, we can see why this is called a sine wave. It has that specific sinusoid, sinusoidal, sin, it basically looks like an S shape lying down. Now let's pay some attention to the frequency spectrum analyzer. What we see here is one specific frequency being read nothing else along the line, just at one peak. And this is what makes the sine wave so special. In other words, the sine wave produces a pure tone with no other extra added harmonics. And this is also why the sine wave is undesirable when doing subtractive synthesis. And if you don't understand why or what that means, you will by the end of this episode. So just stick with me. Right. So now let's switch over to a sawtooth waveform. Now we can instantly see in the oscilloscope here why it's called a sawtooth waveform because it's got a sawtooth shape or a saw shape. Now the really interesting thing here is what's happening in the frequency spectrum analyzer. Now just as with the sine wave, we do have once again a fundamental note, a fundamental pitch or frequency being played. It's the first one right here, one peak. And this is the frequency that we're perceiving as the note that we're playing. But then we have a series of peaks and you can see them dropping down in amplitude, meaning strength. Well, these are what's making the saw wave sound like a saw wave. These are the added harmonics or the added resonant frequencies, or as we musicians really like to call them, overtones. Remember that I mentioned that sine waves are really undesirable when doing subtractive synthesis? Well, it's because subtractive synthesis is all about removing information from the waveform. Information frequencies? You see, filters are designed in a way to keep certain frequencies from passing through. Depending on the type of filter, they will filter out different types of frequencies. 
and with a sine wave, since it's only carrying the fundamental frequency and no other added harmonics, then there's not that much to filter out. So if you're using a low pass filter on a sine wave, which is designed to filter out the higher frequencies and just let the lower frequencies pass through, what you'll end up doing is when you're pulling down on the cutoff, you'll just be changing the volume output of the sine wave and you won't really be changing the timbre of the sine wave. I mean, it only has one frequency to filter out. Whereas saw waves and square waveforms and triangular waveforms and all the waves in between, since these waveforms are harmonically rich, they're more desirable to use for subtractive synthesis because they actually have those extra frequencies to filter out. And so when you filter these, depending on what filter you're using, you're actually changing the harmonic content and in effect changing the shape of the waveform. And of course also the sound. out of coffee. I gotta go get more coffee. Oh, by the way, the, the title, the title isn't clickbait. Now, without touching the resonance knob on a low pass filter, by running a saw waveform, a square waveform or a triangular waveform through that filter, pulling down on the cutoff enough, well, you're effectively filtering off those extra added harmonics. And if you keep going, you'll just end up with a sine wave. Can you see now why I chose the title Sawtooth Waveforms doesn't exist? Question mark? Okay, so the thing with these overtones, even though we're only playing one note on the keyboard, Technically, we are playing several notes at once because these added harmonics or added overtones are acting like notes. The same goes for square waveforms and triangular waveforms and any other waveform in between, except from the sine wave. And so here we're starting to touch upon the topic of additive synthesis. Any sound with a constant duty cycle can be broken down into a set of sine waves which means that we should be able to use only sine waves to reproduce any other type of waveform. Now, if you're a bit confused about this, then don't worry, I'll explain it even further. So stick with me here. Let's have a look at a sawtooth waveform frequency spectrum again. Now, when doing additive synthesis, we basically want to use sine waves to reproduce these peaks here, these overtones, these resonant frequencies. But why do we need to use sine waves specifically? Well, because when we look at the shape of these resonant frequencies, and then if we recall the shape of a sine wave, then we can see that they bear a resemblance. A sine wave basically looks and behaves like a resonant frequency, right? So if we use sine waves to mimic this pattern, setting a series of sine waves to these specific frequencies and these specific amplitudes, then we should basically end up with a sawtooth waveform. Remember the sawtooth waveform I played for you in the beginning? Well, here it is again. What, what was it I said back then? I, I said, crap, I can't see. What did I write here? Uh, oh, uh, what if I told you that this is just a collection of sine waves? And that's exactly what it is. I'm using Phosphor 2 by Audio Damage, an additive synthesizer to produce this saw waveform. You see, this synthesizer can produce a wide range of different waveforms and it's using only sine waves to do it. Here, I'll prove it to you. Now, 
Now, it's not like you can just take sine waves and just, you know, add them at random. There's a specific pattern to this when it comes to the frequencies and the amplitudes of each sine wave in order to make other waveforms. So how do we find out these specific frequencies and these specific amplitudes? Well, there is some crazy math to this and I that's not my strong suit. However, I can mention the harmonic overtone series or if we choose the scientific name, the Fourier series. You know, it's actually French and I think it's pronounced Fourier or Fourier. Uh, I think I butchered that, sorry. You see, the added overtones are always related to the fundamental frequency. Uh, the, the frequencies of the, of the added overtones will change depending on the fundamental frequencies. And we will get deeper into that uh, when we get to the actual additive synthesis episode, because it's very much, very much related to that. I want to round this video up. So stay tuned for the following series, um, for following episodes in this series where I go into all types of synthesis methods. And hopefully uh, now that you've seen this uh, episode about um, harmonics, you'll have a better grasp of it because uh, you kind of need that. Uh, because when I make the other episodes, I will be referring to harmonics whenever I talk about, for instance, uh, wavetable, synthesis or fm synthesis i mean harmonics is <laughs> such a huge part of it so yeah whenever i mention it when you've seen this episode you won't be sitting there wondering what the hell i'm talking about because in the end whenever you're doing synthesis no matter what type of synthesis method you're using whether it's fm synthesis uh, additive synthesis subtractive synthesis what you're doing in the end is you're changing the timbre of a sound by either adding or subtracting harmonic content or even manipulating it in various way with effects, distortion pedals, moving it around by modulating one oscillator with another, you're just changing around the uh, the uh, harmonic content um, in, in a sound basically and so you're messing around with harmonics, uh, yeah, and, and creating timbres or changing them. Ah, I'm so happy that this is over now. Ah. So thank you so much for watching. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. You know, what is really helpful here on YouTube is pressing that thumbs up because every time you do that, you're telling YouTube that my videos are relevant. And so YouTube will just push up my videos to more and more people. And especially now that I'm pushing out lesser videos, fewer videos, I mean, um, and instead I'm trying to put more work into them, more research, make them better, uh, try to make the videos look as, and, and kind of sound as good as I can, um, because I, I actually care about my content and I do care about you viewers and I want to give you the best I got, which always changes, you know, I, 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 I do tend to get better over time and hopefully that will continue. Um, so. Yeah, uh, since I'm doing lesser video, not lesser, but fewer videos, YouTube doesn't like that. YouTube basically wants you to put out as many videos as often as possible. And that's not me, that's not me. I just wanna make quality content for you. So when you're pressing that thumbs up, you're helping me out a lot. So if you wanna support this channel in and other ways, uh, like financially, then you do have Patreon, which I do hope that you consider uh, joining up there. Thanks to all of the existing patrons. Thank, uh, thank you for your pledges and thank you for your support. So if you wanna become one of them, uh, just head on down into the description box and you'll find a series of links and stuff to where you can find me on uh, social media networks and also my Patreon and stuff like that. I also have a PayPal me link so you can do a one-off donation if you rather do that if you don't want to do the patreon thing um if you want to check out some of my music then you can check out my band camp uh, buy some tracks there if you like them um, if you don't want to do that then you can always share my videos to anyone who might be uh, uh, concerned with watching as usual i wish you a very productive week now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it and so if your fundamental frequency is at 200 hertz, then that's actually your first harmonic. When you add something, you begin counting at 
two. So the second harmonic is just a multiplication of the first fundamental harmonic. So if the fundamental one is playing at 200 hertz, then the second added harmonic will be 400 hertz. So for the third harmonic, you basically just multiply the first one three times and you get to 600. For the fourth added harmonic, you just multiply the fundamental frequency four times. Stop, stop, stop. I'm sorry, I'm getting bored, just no. <laughs>